more from a circuit streaming uh, and uh, specifically more uh, track uh, and, stuff. Uh, Oops. More, uh, track. Uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, feel free to jump in and ask questions and uh, make suggestions and all that stuff. So uh, I only have about an hour to do this. Uh, right now, but uh, got a meeting later today. But I thought it'd be nice to uh, kind of get warmed up for that. So yeah, right now I've been uh, I did a bunch of client work this week, so I didn't have a lot of chances to develop this track out more. Um, but uh, been doing some focus on tooling. Um, so I can build this level out more procedurally. And so uh, one of the tools that is in progress right now is uh, something that uh, uses a tree growth kind of algorithm, but with uh, these squish spheres uh, uh, that are truncated. So this uh, plane here as like, you know, a slicer that's slicing into the sphere. Uh, and so... Uh, so right now what I'm doing is just kind of brainstorming based on what I know about... Um, based on what I know... It's actually kind of hard to talk with this type of music. Um, I'm going to turn it down a little bit or... Worked out last time, but I think just that song is going for like kind of chill house kind of stuff. Um, um, and so right now I'm thinking about I know already what this tool can do, and I'm thinking about uh, future things it could be using. Uh, like future, I cannot talk today. Uh, future features uh, of it, and the best way to figure that out is to draw. So, uh, at least for me, that is the case. So, um, I'm thinking about having a uh, maybe a road that actually goes over the truncated parts of the track so that. Um, in fact, maybe it could even dip inside the tracks a little bit. It's kind of a fun idea. You're you're going into these different basins and you're dipping a little bit in each one. And then you've got all these particles that are going shoo 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 like coming kinda of coming out of the uh the uh surface of the liquid. Um so right now I'm I'm focusing on the interior of the juicery track, which uh, if you go into my recorded videos on Twitch, you'll be able to check out the, uh, I was working mostly on like the exterior tree that's dropping all these uh, mysterious fruits and the fruits are getting processed in, uh, in all these vats and the vats are kind of connected to each other and you're, you're maybe racing over top of the vats, which is kind of a fun idea. I was initially having it where, uh, you're racing along the wall, but maybe you start along the vats and then you go to the wall. So uh, that, that's a little more interesting uh, than what the original idea was. So I'm just kind of playing around with this idea that the, the road has some almost some slack to it, uh, sort of like a... Um, Yeah, it's got some slack to it. Um, like a rope bridge. <laughs> wow, roots are not coming to me today. Oh gosh, I forgot to um, I forgot to share what I'm actually streaming. Uh I have this nifty way of switching feeds, but then I have to actually remember to switch the feeds and I got so into the drawing that I didn't do that, so whoops. Yeah, if I uh, if I do something boneheaded like that, uh, someone can write in chat, I would appreciate it. 
that it's pretty hard to remember to switch sometimes. I just, uh, I got too excited. I'm going to go ahead and uh, record my screen here. Oh, it says not available when, oh, interesting. Well, too much for that. So I guess I'll just have to record uh, the window of what I'm actually mirroring here. I like the idea that the road looks kind of stretchy. Maybe uh, the posts that are holding the road up are curving out in the same, uh, you basically take a spline and extend what one of these, uh, the bowls would be general, just plain wire frames. So I really just need this kind of a rough, uh, rough thing to get going, and then uh, I can uh, probably start moving on to different angles. So I, I would say that you know a car is probably about this big on this road, and then I'd have um, a railing. I really want to go with this kind of like parabolic motif that really follows the. Uh, curve of the road all night. So, uh, for any newcomers in here, I'm uh, I'm, stitching the, I, I'm uh, streaming to four different platforms right now, but I can see everybody's comments, except I think Twitter. Um, so if you leave me a comment, I will, I will be able to address it regardless. And for anyone new in here, I'm, uh, I'm designing, I'm, I'm I've been working out the, the development pipeline for the racing game, like how am I going to make the assets. Uh, the current uh, plan is to use uh, something called an HDA workflow where you're using digital assets from Houdini uh, to uh, kind of recook them in Unreal Engine. And right now I'm, uh, I've been making spec sheets and, uh, and, and stuff to uh, to figure out, you know, exactly what needs to happen for that. So maybe we've got another layer of these, or maybe maybe we have um, pipes and stuff that are dripping liquid from above. So you have this kind of a, uh, you have this kind of a 
particle effect maybe that simulates liquid. I like the idea that it's like um, a colorful paint lab kind of a place. I think that's a that's a fun idea. So maybe they're coming down from the ceiling. I want the ceiling to um, to be of like this kind of bright diffused light. I don't want it to feel like a cave inside. Um, so I think there's going to be this like kind of ribbing. Um, So what I'll end up doing after, uh, after I've uh, drawn this is to make some call outs to figure out, you know, how, how these different things will be made. I really want to revisit that AI um, hybrid thing that I started on another stream, but I am... Um, I'm trying to get a lot of things done at once right now. What I need to make sure is that as I if I if I generate all this stuff procedurally, that I'm still able to go in and manually edit different components. Because there's gonna inevitably be like turns that don't work out. They're too um, too slow, too fast. Um, you know, I mean like too tight or too loose uh, and so by moving around these anchor points I'll be able to control where the steering happens but I'm not sure yet uh, more, re re more research needs to be done on uh, just how much control I'll be able to have in the viewport when I'm in Unreal I know for sure so like something I've already done is been able to like move fine control points from an ACA around but this is like a whole different thing so um, I'm wondering if the edges of these bowls should have something that really, right now there, it doesn't really feel like, you know, a, a distillery. Maybe I should actually look up real distilleries. I want this to be like an open face distillery, like something about this juice requires open air. Um, Yeah, here we go. So now, um, yeah, let's take a look at like distilleries. Yeah, see, there's some pretty cool shapes here. I like that. Let's see. <laughs> look at that. These look kind of like musical instruments, don't they? Over to the sides. It's pretty neat. Anyways, um, so yeah, I'm going to go back to the iPad stream. Um, so yeah, so now you can see what I have on uh, my monitor. I'm just looking at, I've been actually been to very many distilleries, so I don't really know how much they can vary. Uh, but one thing that's different between this place and the distillery is that they, you have open space vats. Um, so... 
might be interesting to have some clothes to two and just keep them like clear glass. So maybe um kind of think of like, where where is the majority of the stuff going? Is there a really, really big bath down here? Um, I already have a vague idea of the uh, the layout of the interior part. Is it going to be... You're coming in here. Maybe the part I just drew is like these vats here where you're... Uh... I have to make sure it's not too uh, long though. From above, it's going to look a little bit like a coffin. This is not really the intention. You've got filleted corners here. Those are going to be cool because... It'll kind of give players a choice on whether they... Uh, in this game, you can race on walls, so... Maybe you've got a big monster vat here, but technically the berries are getting crushed up here, so in theory the monster part should actually be near the front. I have to think about this. Well, maybe the big monster vat is actually some kind of a storage thing. I want the entire thing to have sort of this, um, it's almost bottomless. Uh, in that, like, there is no floor, there's just open air. This entire distillery place is, like, suspended in the air. It's a pretty long place here. I either want it to be op more open at the mouth. I just want to make sure that these turns aren't too stiff. Now I sort of have a place where I can kind of map out where I'm going to put uh... So the track's coming in here What's in the middle here? I want to show that you can see some of the in, the environment down here. Uh, like the, the, there's like holes, big holes in the floor. Um, it's kind of, and then you've got this open air kind of deal. Let me go back to black and show like I'm trying to think of it, an interesting roof that is kind of fitting of one of the very few. 
I'm not, I'm not going to have a lot of this, you know, rectangular geometry in this game. be like a throwback to some of the more old-timey factories, too. I feel like if I'm accurate enough with the concept, I could totally just do this stuff procedurally. But there is a limit to like how useful proceduralism is, really, because um, if you only need something a few times, then it's often faster to just model it. There's sort of a, there's a break-even point, a difficult break-even point for each and every, uh, uh, thing. back to uh, this drawing, duplicate it, so uh, I have that saved. So what am I going to have kind of towering, I mean I want to have clusters of these uh, things that look like, uh, I'm looking at the distilleries again for kind of interesting shapes. Yeah, this, there's some kind of novel stuff. Like, to show an example here. Something like that. Yeah, and there's also this one, which is kind of fun. I wish I could show it a little bigger here. Technically, this stuff is pretty easy to model, and I, I might just avoid doing the procedural thing and just UV map it the old-fashioned way, but this is sort of like the reason I'm drawing right now is to kind of make those decisions. Kind of like a cake. It's kind of uh, it's kind of funny when I'm working in these shapes. I'm always battling like real world associations. I'm trying to steer steer clear of those. I want to have particles going through the air, but also maybe through these big tubes. So I'm just going to have some tubes kind of along the tracks. I'm trying to think if there might be a better way to do the tubes rather than just like randomly placing them. But 
I want to have some special linchpin points. One of the uh, things that, you know, every time the track takes a major turn, I want to show that it's... I want it to look like it was, like, kind of draped over all this, like, uh, retroactively, because this is this is like a World's Fair type event. Uh, it's, like, uh, kind of temporary, and they're actually... They're taking this race through various parts of industry. Um, I think it's kind of a funny idea. It's, it's a way to... Um, It's a way to kind of show uh, different aspects of um, of the world in world. It's an in it's an in world ex uh, uh, desire to um, to do exposition because it is an expo. It's uh, it, it works it works meta like that. Uh, maybe I have to find a different word besides meta. I feel like the word has been contaminated. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at more uh, distillery stuff. It's like that's an, that's an interesting shape. Um, Having all these things sticking out, uh, sticking out of the side, like that's great. I think all I have to really do is bring in a few of these types of elements to kind of show the idea. Really like some of these like really bright colors for uh, for the distilleries. Um, I could also go for something kind of shiny looking. I think like. Uh, what's what's really uh, what's really um, surprising is how uh, what's really surprising is is how relatively performant you can get shiny materials in Unreal. Um, right now, in the the main test track, things are very shiny. Um, it's actually too shiny. It's gonna I'm gonna have to dull it down. Uh, it's hard to see the paint on the track right now. But uh, so right now I'm gonna I'm gonna extend the canvas here. I like to work um, at a relatively small canvas and just uh, extend as I need. So. So on Twitch, uh, Coal Miner Audio says distilleries always look so cool. They really do. Uh, I know, like they, they don't have to be this pretty. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, here, here's another one. It's kind of an art form. Um, I, uh, I don't know that much about the science of distilling. I'm, I'm not that into alcohol, but I am kind of, just looking at them makes me kind of want to know more about what they're actually doing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, who thought I'd be researching distilleries for a racing game, but, um, so yeah, so I'm trying to think about the best way to transition the road to, uh, this back wall. There's going to be this filleted edge where players can either decide to stay on the road, in which case they have to make a more difficult turn and risk hitting the wall, which is right here or they can ride up on the wall uh, where they'll have more room and it might be like more disorienting, but then they don't have to make a turn at all. Once they're, once they're on this wall, they can just stay on the wall and wrap around. Um, but technically, because it's filleted, if you stay on the wall, you have more distance to cover. So it's kind of a trade-off. Like do you believe in your steering ability good enough to hug that road at the bottom and risk hitting this wall part is kind of like right here and the perspective doesn't make sense at all right now but I'm really just kind of figuring out um, overall configuration of this um, and I also have to figure out you know what kind of stuff is going to be on the wall is there going to be stuff to avoid uh, maybe some stuff hanging down 
Uh, I'll probably need to make a new drawing for that, but go ahead and extend uh, this canvas a bit. Think about this. Just kind of partially in like orthographic perspective here. Yeah, so they stay on this wall and then they can, the tricky thing is you got to have an exit strategy from this building and I want people to exit farther higher than when they came in. And so I've got to think about, I've got to think about how that's going to work. I think uh, I've got this ramp going up. I think I can just have a ramp. So maybe the road is suspended. The, ro the road is being a, uh, so one of the, one of the in, in all the tracks, you're going to have kind of um, often a similar kind of suspension system that looks kind of like what I'm drawing here. And so I guess you can have um, something that's showing. weird. I just basically have to draw multiple angles of this to really sell it. Actually, the best way to design is in VR. Um, you can really get a sense of the space that way. think about uh, lighting and color some more. Diffuse sunlight is what I'm going for, but I'm going to fake it by basically just having uh, a material light emitter um, as part of the ceiling. I'm actually going to look up some reference on that, but maybe not right now. So I'm kind of moving away from the whole rectangular place in favor for something more, uh, more irregular but still geometric. I just, I don't like the idea of making players take a lot of right turns. Like, I know Mario Kart does it, um, but I want to have a narrower track in a lot of places. I, mean, I guess variety is the spice of life, so I should probably have some of them, but it's, it's kind of a bias. I have kind of a bias against it. I mean, these are not exactly right turns, but like, you know, this one here is pretty close. Um, Oh, you know what would be cool? Hmm, how do you do this? I, I kind of like the idea of painting on windows for the wall. That would be totally possible, too. You've got this cool vista. And I'll carry on the, um, the, whole, the whole motif of, like, kind of circles, rounded stuff. So you could do that kind of whole, it's kind of a generic uh, sci-fi pattern, but the only challenge with this is that um, it's going to have to be a frosted window, and I'm starting to worry that if you have this much detail, then paint is going to be kind of hard to see. Uh, I keep being tempted to have very like interesting things happening with the... Uh, um, with the road and then I have to keep remembering that like it's just going to make it harder to see what's going on so um so I'm going to get rid of that I'm just going to have a much simpler window 
having some variation is fine. Um, Yeah, maybe for each turn, I've got this kind of curved, um, kind of uh, oblong cap. I can't even think it's best called like a capsule shape, and that kind of goes uh, with the motif of like the distillery shapes as well. Uh, and so the idea is that this is like frosted glass here, uh, and on this frosted glass, people can be racing and painting as normal. There's quite a lot of area. It's probably a little too big right now because I don't want I don't want players having too much area to race on. Not just because it's easier, but because I want to have that dynamic where they're like painting over each other's paint all the time. And if I give them too much space, like not enough space, and then you're frustrated because it's too crowded. You want kind of the right balance, um, and that's going to come with testing. Uh, right now, the best I can do is. Do what I can procedurally or uh, so that when I make changes, I don't have to worry as much. So technically, all of this stuff here can be along a spline. And if I can just make manual tweaks um, to specific groups, so like in Houdini, you can label certain points. Uh, you can make even a single point can be a group and you can tell it, select just these points move them outward so that procedurally you can do basically what you'd be doing in a non-procedural modeler. It, it makes more of a mess, um, but uh, it's easier to deal with in some other ways. So. I kind of like the idea that the people who stayed on the lower side can take some kind of little elevator that takes them up real quick. Oh, what if it's like a conveyor belt with little platforms on it? Kind of like that idea. So like, I don't know, like... So like, it's moving fast enough that um, if you stay on the wall and you just go up this way, it's the same thing as if you rode this thing, if you stayed on the road part, and uh, or, you know, it's equivalent. The only difference is that here you can paint. If you ride the elevator, you can't. I don't think I've ever, I'm sure there's a car elevator in like Mario Kart. I don't remember ever seeing a car elevator in any kart race I've played. Uh, there might be a reason for that, but it, it sounds like fun. Makes me think of like, you know, the MMOs and stuff where you don't want to instance anything. And so if you want to get people up, you have these like open elevators. It's always kind of annoying waiting in the elevator, but this way you don't have to wait like, you know, or you only have to wait like half a second before the thing comes up and scoops you up. Um, on Twitch, Puzzlerium says, elevators halt the action is the thing. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you had a really dramatic sound and it only lasted for a few seconds, that would that would be fine. Are you afraid that it would like break a flow state? I'm just like, hmm. Maybe instead of an elevator, I could have sworn that I've seen stuff that takes you and carries you where you're you don't have to do anything. You just watch. Like in, okay, yeah. In uh, in Mario Kart, they have that cannon that you go into, and 
the cannon shoots you and you get to just watch what it does and you don't have any I don't think you have any control over what happens when it happens it's just kind of fun to watch and I would argue that that doesn't break flow um Uh, on Switch, Coalminer Audio says, you can always drive on the walls of the elevator. Yeah, this ele this particular elevator was really just going to be like a vertical compare belt that had platforms on it. So something kind of like, uh, like this. Um, Yeah, it's one of those things that I don't really want to build this thing until I know for sure it's fun because it's going to be extra work um, trying to avoid that where possible. I mean, it's like it's worth doing the extra work if you know for sure it's going to be like really cool. But if you don't, yeah, it's a little riskier. Make a simple mock-up. Yeah, I mean... From from the last meeting, it sounds like animation, mechanical animation that doesn't involve like stretching and like vertex, like like, like um, waiting, surface waiting is not that hard to do. So we could maybe mock something like this up. It definitely have to be more than a cube that moves up and down because uh, you want you want to be able to slam into the wall. But yeah, there is the problem. You know what? You're gonna to need to have some kind of a universal boost pad right at the end of this thing to give you your momentum back. So it's tough to lose all your momentum because then after you exit the elevator, you've got to accelerate again, and that's that's not that's not great. Um, but if you had something that like hits you, maybe there's a flap, maybe there's a rotating flap uh, that uh, on each one of these uh, parts of the conveyor belt. That you know that that is basically a little like flap that like kicks the car. It's just like it's like a a, um, a boot to the butt that like gives you momentum. Q uh, so on Twitch, Elizabeth says QTE mini game going on during the lift. QTE mini game. What QTE? Oh, quick time event. Okay. Um, uh, maybe. Boy, that, that's feeling like I don't want to trip people's headspace up too much. Like, like I, I don't want to make people shift gears too quickly, so to speak. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely have another factory track. There's a ton of factory-like places um, in this world. It's definitely a place where lots of interesting things are made. I'm gonna brainstorm some of the little like distillery bips and bobs here that I wanna uh, make as like early HDA tools. I wanna have these long, um, so they copy off the distillery thing. I'm going to have all these little, I don't know if these are valves. Um, they just look like little windows that maybe, maybe they just let you see what the liquid level is. You'd think that'd be what the readings are for. I think that the way I'd want to make the Houdini tool is you've got this modular thing where you can kind of, uh, Give it a little bit of a curve. I want to have it where each section has a different like sub node in the HDA that lets me just kind of modularly. I'll have like you know five different variants of spheres, five different variants of like capsule tubes, 
Um, and uh, each segment, I could randomly call on another variation. So, um, I'm just kind of puzzling with saying, steam the pipes to satisfactory, great visual animation that plays to show the, the fluid volume and levels. Yeah, I'm going to look that up. Um, my, my hope was to use, um, to show that these batteries are really, uh, not batteries, but these berries are really interesting and weird, um, and they're making these crazy particles. Oh, that's a great shape. I like, that is very pleasing. I like that. Um, oh, here we go. I think that you're talking about, no, that's not liquid. That's, uh, I probably have to watch an animation. Oh, pulsating rings are growing shrink. Oh yeah, that's cool. So it's not actually deforming the pipe itself. It's like, it's a VFX that's like within the pipe. Oh man, that all looks so pleasing. Yes, yeah, it's actually not bad like reference material right now while doing this. I guess I could play around with some jointing like this. So yeah, how much do I want these things to branch? I could have modules that, that do do that. I really want to show something that looks like trees. Like you're starting with a big vat and... Well, no, wait a minute. I'm thinking about how you do this. It's almost like you're crushing all the bat berries, putting them in one big vat, and then you're separating them again and making like different variants from that. And so if you're separating, then like, you know, you have a... Uh, you know, you, you've got this kind of a branching pattern, uh, at least conceptually. And so it's sort of like liquid goes in, goes, gets crushed into a big vat. See, you could have it where the berries are getting separated and then crushed into smaller vats. And that's, that kind of is determined by like the layout of the track. So let me, let me go back into the track and, um, Play around with that. Oh, sounds like my music stopped here. Did I really get to the end? Oh, shuffling got turned on. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. The blue tube that has three lifesavers cut into quarters of pulse. Okay. I'd probably want to look at a... Uh, my thought was just take an emitter and put it, you know, at the bottom and just, um, you know, make particles go up through it that way. Yeah, find it, find a GIF. I, uh, I'd like to see that. I'm going to be hopping on to a meeting soon. Um, but uh, it's kind of nice to do a quick stream. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll jump in. Maybe I'll do a little VR stuff. I... Uh, later after my meeting. Kind of depends on how long it goes. Um, I still don't have a stream schedule. I don't know. I, uh, the schedule's been kind of chaotic where I don't have a lot of like guaranteed openings that I can very reliably say I'll be able to stream at this time all the time. Um, So it's been a little tough to uh, 
to figure out what the best schedule is. I've been kind of just streaming kind of around the clock um, so that I could kind of get a sense of when people are like more just organically on. Uh, so I don't know, you know, where my, I don't know where like my, my viewership, like what, you know, it just kind of depends on things like time zone. And um, I know that a lot of the people who follow my work are also freelancers. Um, and so, in theory, um, like there are people who like to put streams on while they work. Um, in which case, like kind of earlier in the day is better. I've uh, streamed during dinner time in Pacific, and it seems like people are less likely to be like watching streams then. Um, Kind of like, uh, it's kind of getting this whole steampunk thing going on. Kind of like, uh... My whole idea is that, uh... Even though steampunk doesn't look all that much like my world, um... I could do some stuff to affect just like the shape of the, uh, the distillery stuff a little bit. Like for example, turning it like, making it a little more like this instantly gives it more of the uh, the identity of the, the world I'm going for. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely try to make this stuff procedurally, and then if I can have emitters, heck, if I could do like just particles using Houdini, that might actually not be a bad way to go. I just, I kind of like the idea of doing particles in Unreal because it's just a little more fluid. Uh, like you can make a change without having to open up another software and re-export stuff and all that. So. Um, but I could just make like emitter geometry. Yep, uh, definitely uh, made some made some decisions. Uh, I still have some some open decisions here, but uh, it was a uh, you know, uh, nice short and sweet stream because. Uh, to think about how I want the uh, the road to look over here if I want to have those same the same kind of tension tension holders and then if I have something big here kind of in the middle if they've got a big or something. Being able to draw freehand a circle certainly helps, but is not required when you have the wonder that is the liquify tool. I prefer the kind of the messy line look right now. You can always define it later, it's not too hard to do. I 
I still want to do something about the lip of these, uh, these things. Maybe I can give them they almost like, like flower petals, but the flower petals are actually like, have these little tubes on them. So you're kind of drip feeding liquid from these smaller things. And the smaller things have cables that are coming from the ceiling. And the tables have smaller things and kind of do this whole like fractal thing, which I think is uh, definitely uh, fits the procedural workflow pretty well for sure. Yeah, so it's been about an hour, I think, 55 minutes. Um, I'll go for another five minutes. Maybe I've got, oh, I know, I've got something that looks kind of like a squid with all these uh, tubes. It's like, a, imagine, imagine a distillery squid. That's actually an excellent AI prompt. Oh, man. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to play around with distillery squid. That, that sounds amazing. I want Dolly so bad. I, <laughs> I've been on the wait list for a long time, and I'm seeing people who have been on the wait list for less time getting in. And they must have some kind of a lottery or something. Huh, weird. For some reason, the music stopped. Spotify has been, like, spotty lately for me. I could take you to each one of these and sort of do like a side view diagram. Right now I'm just trying to figure out how it might fit into the space. <sighs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Overall, I've been happier with Spotify. I, I, I tried it years ago and I, I wasn't, I didn't really like how they did stuff. In terms of, uh, and, uh, and they, uh, the algorithm just seemed great. It kept, it kept recommending music I just wasn't that into. Uh, but this time around, it's been a lot better. I think they really improved the algorithm. I'm, they've got some kind of like a three months for the price of one trial happening for like previous subscribers. So I'm rocking that right now. The, the main reason that... Uh, I actually found they've got royalty-free music playlists on Spotify now, which I don't remember them having before. Um, there's a bunch of streaming services that are like catering to streamers right now, um, and uh, but they're like more expensive than Spotify than for just the royalty-free music, which I mean, in a sense, makes sense. Um, uh, so it's kind of kind of a nice compromise to that problem. It's kind of hard to find royalty-free music on YouTube. I was looking for like playlists that, unless it's lo-fi, <laughs> then, then I can find them. Um, maybe 
have got uh, spheres within spheres. That's kind of a fun, uh, like kind of this fractal. Spear packing algorithms are really cool. I've played with this uh, 3D scripts before. I'm sure there's a nifty way to do that with uh, Houdini, so you're gonna have to play with that. But yeah, um, I have just hit the one hour mark, so um, I'm gonna have to get going. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, thank you to everybody who uh, who stopped in, and uh, yeah, uh, I will definitely be continuing on on this uh, this project. Um, I'll show one one final shot of it uh, where where I've left off here, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, have a great day, everyone, um, and yeah, later.